the bubble's gonna burst. They're writing checks that are it's it's play money. It's just like yeah. they're just snatching money out of the air. This is not real. All right, y'all. Bearder Bros Golf Show. We are back with the midweek edition after the last two days of tumultuous activity on the golf landscape. Um, introductions. I am Rod. And I'm Marcus. Hey, I feel like the USGA and RNA uh, had to fix in and, and intentionally plan their golf ball announcement around <laughs> the live rumors. They were they saw the opening coming up these last couple oh, yeah. of weeks, and they're like, let's get in front of this bad boy. Yeah, money is great, but when Kelly and I, was, this first thing happened, we, we started talking about it. We're like, will a lifestyle change if I got $400 million? No. It will not change one bit. Truth be told, I could retire right now with what I've made and I've lived a very happy life and not play golf again. So uh, I've never really played the game of golf for monetary reasons. I play for the, for the love of the game and I want to play against the best in the world. I've always been interested in history and legacy. And right now the PGA Tour has that. There's, there's a meaning when you win the Memorial Championship. There's a meaning when you win Arnold Palmer's event at Bay Hill. There's a meaning when you win LA, Torrey, some of these historic venues. And that to me matters a lot, right? Uh, I have, you know, after this winning this, this past US Open, you know, only me and Tiger have won at Torrey Pines and we're both the golf course that we like, making putts on the 18th hole, right? That's a memory I'm gonna have forever that not many people can say. So uh, my heart is with the PGA Tour. That's all I can say. It's not my business or my character ju to judge anybody who, who thinks otherwise. Uh, and for a lot of people, I'm not gonna lie, those next three, four years are worth basically their, their retirement plan they're giving them. It's a, it's a very nice compensation to then retire and sail off to the sunset. Um, things that he's, we've always said he's kind of stuck his ankle out there and flirted a little bit with the live situation. Never right. fully blasting it. I think this is probably the strongest language that he said during the last couple of years and that he was, you know, again, probably leaving the door just a little bit ajar, um, kind of playing in neutral. But again, that, that was a, pretty forceful minute and 45 seconds of, of comments. Very pointed, even though he said he yeah. was going to be delicate, very pointed and how he felt about it. After seeing these, these wild numbers, golf is in a financial bubble. And it's it, it reminds me of like the housing crisis that you have a lot of folks getting money that doesn't really exist in the game of golf. They're, right. The money that Liv has paid these players we are well into over over a billion dollars that they have paid out to acquire yeah. these players that are on live there ain't a billion dollars coming into that league so is it about making a profit we've talked about the reasons behind the league is it ulterior motives but again billions and even when you include yeah. the structural operational cost there's not enough revenue coming into the professional game of golf and again i like to talk about how there's two different types of golf there's amateur golf that we play and enjoy and we'll go play this weekend or tomorrow and you know we're gonna still play golf and then yeah. there's the professional game the viewership this spectator part of it the fandom of golf but there's not the money that's being paid out the pga tour that's why they're struggling right now too having to come up with these elevated events last year and the you know pip all these different things to keep people happy that money ain't there so yeah. golf is in this financial bubble right now that really they cannot afford and and it's gonna bust at some point in time this shit that we're experiencing cannot go on forever this arms race of just throwing hundreds of millions of dollars at people when does it actually do something because you have fans pissed off right now people that are saying they only watch the majors and we're just throwing money out left and right so kudos to you for bringing that up a couple weeks ago and you know just kind of reflecting the day i was like mark is actually kind of damn right there's the, this money is ridiculous and it's not real right you think about like when we were honestly, when we were talking about points, it kind of came up too, because it's like, yeah, bro, like the Ford net is like 400 FedEx points or whatever. But yeah, you just need like every freaking episode of 
uh, Breaking Bad wasn't amazing, you're going to have some mediocre weeks. Every episode uh-huh. of Martin wasn't drop dead hilarious. You're going to have some serious moments. But at the end of the day, you're going to have to have some filler in there. And all your filler isn't going to be big boy money. Some of that stuff is going to have to be your value menu stuff. So, John Rom, why are you out here talking about the Tory Pines when you're making a living off of winning the American Express? You're a repeat winner of this BS early season event. This is a, a top 175 event where they have to play on three courses just to get everybody out there, and then they have a cut, and then it's just a freaking Corn Ferry Tour event. And then a couple of PGA stars that want to play early, know about the area, know about the court, such and such and such. So, yeah. again, when it comes to winning these prolific events and being prolific and winning, maybe we should think about the resume of what all Ram is winning besides the U.S. Open and the Masters. Because if we want to go to the fine print, we can go to some BS wins for you too, my boy. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, that's credible. That is very credible. Um, and, you know, in a response to a comment this week on the channel, um, I, I just said something th- to somebody that's like, you know, the live folks play 14 tournaments in, and I'm sure they're, you know, kind of abbreviated playoff or whatever, but I'm like, I'm a golf fan. I literally watch golf. If there was golf on seven days a week, I'd probably turn it on six of the seven, if not seven of the seven, just right. and have it in the background or, you know, just seeing the greatest at the game of golf do what they do. I'll just enjoy watching golf because it's a hard game to play and master. And so seeing the best of the best play it, that's something that's appealing to me. And I said, I want to watch as much golf as available. So if you're only playing 14 weeks of the year and the PGA Tour is playing essentially about 46 to 50 weeks of the year, sign me up for that shit. That's what I want. Even if it's not, I'm sorry. At the end of the day, think about the most kind of blah. Think about somebody like a Nick Watney. Bro, do you think Nick Watney wouldn't come out here and just like take people's money left and right, even if he's struggling Crazy. to to kill it on the PGA Tour? Nick Watney would come snatch every dollar you have in your wallet Yeah, on Listen. his worst day. Again, the product, the PGA Tour does not bring in a crap ton of money. We love right. it like nobody's business, but when you think about their avenues to make money, it's yeah. actually not that, there's not that many avenues, right? So you're talking about TV deals. Again, they're poaching some of your players, so you're losing you're losing fandom. So yeah. not as many people are watching. You know, the, the gate crowds aren't bringing in a ton of money. You think about it, what, there's a handful of events that the crowds are crazy, right? So the waste yeah. management, you know, you're going to see a ton of crowds. Depending on the weather, even at Pebble Beach, you might get some decent crowds. These are not high revenue things. There's not, I mean, there's PGA tour merch, but I mean, I just wait for my PGA tour merch to go to Ross and pick it up from there. Right. Uh, I'm not, Mm -hmm. I'm not paying $70 for a PGA tour polo because it's PGA tour. So when you think about their ways that they can bring in money, where is it going to come from? Again, this bubble of just made up money is going to burst at some point. It's just not going to last forever. You cannot convince me of of different. It's not the bubble's going to burst. They're writing checks that are it's it's play money. It's just like yeah. they're just snatching money out of the air. This is not real. So anyway, Bearded Bros Golf Show. You, you get a lot of stuff out of this channel, y'all. A little business knowledge, you know, a little technical golf knowledge, a little BS in here and there. You're you're in a well-rounded environment. <laughs> so Absolutely. uh Hit that subscribe button. Hit that membership button. Um, We got you covered on all things golf.